Hello everyone, Elise Quevedo here. The tech world continues to move at a very fast pace with CES Las Vegas just finished and with Mobile World Congress Barcelona just around the corner. Let's talk about tech predictions for 2024 and the upcoming MWC. To do that, I am joined by globally recognized networking and security analyst, Will Townsend. Hey, Will. Nice to see you today. How are you? Elise. Elise, good to see you. It's been way too long. I know, too long. But let's get right to it because I will be seeing you in a very short period of time in Barcelona. But Will, as an analyst, you keep a very close eye on trends. And with 2024 just beginning, what are your tech predictions for this year? Well, at least that's that's you know a great question, and I wish I had a crystal ball uh, because if I did, um, I'd probably be a, a multimillionaire and on a yacht somewhere, you know, off the coast of Barcelona. But um, you know, from my perspective, I did publish something on Forbes around networking and security predictions. But you know, from my perspective, I really believe twenty twenty four is going to be the year that satellite communication really comes to the forefront and how it integrates with terrestrial networks. I've written quite a bit about um, at and and AST Space Mobile and their continued collaboration, as well as T-Mobile in the United States and Starlink with direct-to-cell capabilities. Um, all of these efforts have the potential to bridge the digital divide in very rural areas where it just doesn't make sense to install radio access network infrastructure. And so, but there are other initiatives that are going on throughout the world in Europe, um, as well as in Canada and Asia and, and all over the world. And it's, it's exciting, it's early days. And um, I think for, for those to be successful, they're gonna need to follow those three GPP standards that are basically the, the defined standards for cellular connectivity. There have been some early uh, ventures that sort of fall outside of the standards. The big challenge with that is that you can't scale that. And you know, Qualcomm was focused on something that was non-standard ahead of the curve, and uh, they pulled back on um, their NTN efforts. But I do expect at Mobile World Congress next week that we're going to hear a lot about satellite communications. There are lots of companies that are focused on this area, and again. It's exciting because it has the potential to bridge the digital divide. Absolutely, Will. And thank you for sharing your views on this topic. And this is actually one of the ones that I want us to get into depth after Mobile World Congress, because yep. I'm sure you're going to have lots of insights uh, into this topic. Now, for yeah. me, there is one, Will, uh, that is a big one, which is generative AI. I feel that it has been misused this last year. and I think for 2024 and even over the next five years that companies and individuals are going to be investing a lot more to truly understand how to use it. And I'm sure you've seen recently it was Sora that has just been released. And I love how they fuse how it can be used, but they've also said, oh, these are our challenges. This is what is going wrong. Yeah. We want the investment to come in. And I think this is a very clever way of releasing some new tech or some way of using it when it's not really fully ready. Can I have your quick thoughts on that one, actually? Also? Yeah, no, no, I completely agree with you. And I think, you know, there's a lot of focus on generative AI. I call it the gold rush. And, you know, bringing natural language interface to artificial intelligence is making it real for a lot of folks. And ChatGPT certainly has done a lot there. Um, I think there's a lot to be done. I mean, people are now discovering the fact that, you know, AI is only as good as the data that's used to train it. And we're hearing about hallucinations. And I mean, it's some, it, it sounds like very far-fetched, you know, sci-fi type stuff, but it's, we have to remember, it's still very early days. And, you know, it's interesting that you bring up generative AI because I do believe an, another big theme that we're going to you know, hear about at Mobile World Congress next week is around AI, generative AI, and how it's going to impact telco transformation. We've already seen some very early uh, promising uh, you know, news around this with NVIDIA and AT&T working together to facilitate intelligent truck rolls as you, know, you deploy uh, you know, 
public mobile networks and, and, and that sort of thing. But I think the applications for customer service and field service uh, in particular are going to be quite compelling. And I think for telecommunications infrastructure, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning can do a lot to improve network resiliency. Uh, there was just an outage in the United States uh, as we're speaking today. I'm not going to name the uh, the carrier, but but this happens frequently, and you know it can be uh, it can be done you know via cybersecurity t attacks, or it can just be you know a fiber cut that happens. So I think you know you know I'm glad you brought up generative AI because I think that'll be another major theme at uh, MWC Barcelona. Exactly. So following up on that, then will. With MWC literally two, three days away with all the previews that there will be, what are you looking yeah. forward to seeing yourself this year? Because there are too many topics, too many themes. Yeah. You can't see everything. So what do you want to see? Well, you know, I, I always love to meet with customers and, and sort of understand their journeys and that sort of thing. And, you know, and another big theme I think we're going to hear uh, this year is about the evolution of Open RAN. And what that can do to improve agility and deploy networks faster, um, as well as private networking. So I'm I'm super excited to be meeting. I mean, I you know my dance card is full of lease. I, you know I'm like you know I do this. I always overschedule myself, but it's exciting because I'll be meeting with infrastructure providers, mobile network operators, um, you know service providers, and. I'm really excited about, you know, hearing about business outcomes and, you know, how customers are transforming their businesses and, and driving digital transformation through through cellular mobility, quite frankly. So, you know, that's what I'm most excited about this year. Thank you, Will. And uh, funny that you mentioned the part of overbooking yourself, because a couple <laughs> of months ago, I released some thoughts or tips on uh, Mobile Congress. And one of them was actually planning, planning, and more planning from learning yeah. from previous mistakes where you think you're going to see everything, you think you're going to meet everybody. Yeah, it just doesn't happen, does it, Will? It <laughs> we, we <laughs> work. It doesn't happen. Sorry, it's just way too yeah. big. I feel we need two weeks for Mobile World Congress or even more, uh, yeah. but yeah, let's make the most of it. And of course, we will make an attempt to see each other during the Congress, even though it tends to be flying by because we're going to so many places. But myself, today, I look forward to seeing more use cases. I said it last year and I felt there weren't enough because a lot of brands and companies are coming up and they talk a lot but they don't really tell us, okay, this is exactly how we're using it. This is where it has yeah. been deployed. And this is what I want to see more, especially from the telcos and the tech giants. Again, they yeah. have enough investment and backing behind them to show us the reality of where the money is going. Show us the tech, show them the different countries from around the world that are actually using it. And based on this, Will, none of these predictions can become a reality without C-level individuals creating these things first. So my last question for you today, Will, because you are an analyst that is surrounded and talks to a lot of C-level people, what is the one skill you think top-level execs need to elevate their game this year? Wow, that's a that's a great question. Um, how can how can execs elevate their their skill level? I think it's just you know it's driving digital transformation deeper and deeper into your organization and, and modernizing things. And certainly, you know, mobility achieves that on many different levels. I I think one of the greatest opportunities to get back to private cellular networking again is the ability to automate manufacturing and drive efficiencies and economies of scale. And that's super important when you look at what's happening in, in the United States right now with a lot of reshoring of manufacturing, a lot of investment in semiconductor production um, in different parts of the country. Where I live in Texas, Samsung's making multi-billion dollar investments, Intel and NVIDIA, um, you know, not Intel. Well, yeah, I mean, Intel is is making investments in, in, in fabrication. I was going to mention not NVIDIA, but they actually, there was a big announcement with Intel and Microsoft 
on how they're going to, to leverage, you know, over $15 billion in investment to drive further manufacturing uh, efficiencies. And um, cellular connectivity and operational technology environments can achieve that. So um, that's a long way to answer your question, but I think just driving digital transformation deeper within your organization, leveraging that power to not only modernize your operations, but modernize how you interact with your customers is going to bring you a competitive advantage. So that's how I would address that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Well, for me, yeah. I, for me, this is about the human side and that the sea level industry needs to listen more. For me, this is one skill that this year I think needs to be made more attention because I was recently at a meeting where there was a lot of leadership and nobody seemed to be listening to each other. So here's my question today to you, because I'm always intrigued to see how mm -hmm. others think, because what I saw was a lot of heads talking and sharing their ideas of what they wanted to do, but you didn't have anyone that was, as you said, driving it forward. So I think yeah. we need to listen, or C-level needs to listen to their customers. They need to listen to their teams and they need to listen to their ideas of how to make their products better and how to make the whole ecosystem better. So that would be my one, I think, listening. Yeah. Me more, which no, I, I think that's, that's spot on. You know, it comes down to execution and oftentimes, you know, organizations don't know where to start and they're, there are lots of resources out there on, you know, hey, leveraging mobility for digital transformation. I mean, Mobile World Congress is a great event because that really, it really highlights, you know, the capabilities within infrastructure providers, integrators, you know, uh, communication service providers. So, you know, if you have the, the time uh, to spare and the budget to spare and have some budget left over for some good wine and tapas, Barcelona is going to be the place to be next week. Absolutely, Will. And hey, everyone, there you have it. More insights about the tech world for this year. Make sure you follow Will at Will Town Tech. The link will be somewhere above or below one of those two, <laughs> um, because <laughs> it does have a lot of wisdom in the tech industry. And hey, Will, thanks again for your time today. As I mentioned earlier, we will be having a more in-depth talk with highlights uh, after Mobile World Congress. So I will see you in Barcelona. Everyone, I'm Elise Quevedo. Until next time.